This is Jill Janice of Huntress. You're watching Crippled and Broken. My name is uh, Chris Moreno. I'm the creator of Zombie Dickheads, a new book that I'm self-publishing. Well, uh, originally uh, I was approached by uh, Rich Woodall and Adam Miller, and they're the, uh, the editors of Zombie Bomb, which is a zombie anthology that Terminal Press put out. And they uh, wanted me to do a story for the anthology. And I said, sure. And then immediately afterwards, I was like, what am I, like, you know, what, what am I going to do? Because uh, sort of zo zombies are hot right now. It's a lot of sort of well-trod uh, upon territory. Um, but, you know, the title sort of came first. Like, you know, Zombie Dick has made me think of, made me think it was such a, such an individual title to give like a zombie or something to call a zombie, you know, because like, zombies are usually like a mob monster. They're like a, a group of anonymous sort of creatures. It's like the idea of making zombies uh, characters with their own personalities. And then also to set the story and sort of do it from their point of view was sort of an interesting idea, so it just sort of came from there. Well, uh, there's four main zombie characters. I like to describe them as like if you imagine the characters in a zombie movie that get everybody killed, right? The, uh, the contrarian, the person who's sort of like absent-minded and lazy, the, the person who thinks they're the leader but they're really not a leader. And then just imagine that it's the day after everybody gets eaten and they all just sit up and go back to arguing again. Um, Josh is, uh, is the fat green one and uh, he's very lazy. Uh, he's not as argumentative as the rest of the group because he really doesn't care enough to sort of get into it. But you know, when he has his, he makes his opinions known. Usually he's, he's the voice of reason. Uh, he's the guy that's like pointing out the window and saying like, hey, there's guys with guns coming. Um, the, all the zombie characters, they don't eat people. That's the, one of the things also that sets them apart from the zombie crowd and they all sort of have their own reasons for it. And Josh is, is that he's lazy. People run, and he don't have to chase after them. And like most lazy people, the longer you go without doing something, uh, the easier it is to just not do it at all. Um, Dennis is the uh, is sort of the the prissy, preppy uh, member of the group, and he he's the only member of the of, of the dickheads who changes into fresh clothes all the time. He doesn't like being dirty. Uh, of course, like his wounds always sort of like dirty the clothes up some more. And he's the guy that sort of like, he's like the den mother of the group. He's the guy that likes to think he's in charge. He likes to order people around and tell them what to do, but nobody listens to him anyway. Josh calls him Dickless as a nickname, which Dennis hates. Um, Lisa is, uh, she's sort of the damsel in distress, but like, you know, she's the damsel who puts herself in distress. One of the running gags in the story, she's always just sort of wandering off because she gets bored easily. She's always sort of looking for cooler people to hang out with. She's sort of stuck with the ones that she's got because they take care of her and keep her from getting her head blown off. But if there were cooler people around, she totally would hang out with them. Um, and then uh, Colton is the, uh, he's the, he's the contrarian. He's the guy that when they say go left, he says, let's go right. For no other reason than like he just doesn't want to do what everybody else is doing. Um, he's sort of a hipster. He's sort of a jerk. He's the kind of guy that likes movies that you've never seen and listens to bands you've never heard of and sort of just knows things that you don't know about uh, and don't understand and he's definitely like the hothead he's the he's the most argumentative of the group well i've got a bunch of them uh, i'm working on the script for the second one right now but i've got a bunch of them outlined um it's it's sort of my pet project so it's the one i sort of get to in between freelance gigs so that was part of the reason why i wanted to make sure every story is self-contained so this one shot gives you like a full complete story with the characters if you get the next one, then it'll, it'll sort of continue from there, but it's not a very linear uh, sort of transition from one story to another. It's just sort of random adventures. And one of the things I did in the book, too, was I put the characters in real places. So the, the main story in, the, in this, this first one takes place in a town called Zebulon, North Carolina. I just liked the name. I thought it was cool. It sounded like a UFO or something. But, but their town motto, is, I think, is the town of friendly people. And I thought it would be really cool to sort of zombie up that town and just sort of have the characters run around in it. And I've been encouraging people that are fans to send me pictures of their town or tell me about their town so that I can, you know, put it in sort of the next story. Well, I mean, uh, I can usually move it like a page a day average. I mean, if, depending on the project, I can sort of turn it up. Uh, 
for a book like that, I sort of basically had to factor time out in between projects. I gave myself about two months to put the whole thing together. The first eight pages was already done for the anthology, and then I did a whole new 32-page story uh, to go along with it. I mean, I've been, I've been working in comics for about 11 years, and uh, I've probably been making my living doing it for the past five. Um, it's uh, a lot of comics. Uh, since I moved out to L.A., I've been out in L.A. for about four years, and I've been doing a lot more storyboards and concept art. And You know, I'm, a, I, I, I'm, I'm an illustrator in general, so it's like, you know, any, anything that sort of requires a, a visual element is usually I'm sort of up for. And, um, but yeah, I've been lucky enough to, to make my living off it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's been, it's been pretty good. And, and one of the, the ways to do that is that I've got a lot of diverse styles and, you know, I change it up for projects. And sort of got into comics through liking animation, so I always liked all the animators, uh, Bob Clampett and Chuck Jones and Tex Avery and all that stuff. And then my dad was the big comic reader in the house, so he read a lot of Thor, a lot of Conan, so it was a lot of John Buscema and people like that. And, um, but I was always into humor books as a kid too, so like I love Mad Magazine and I love Crack Magazine. And what I didn't realize was so many of the guy, the old EC Comics guys came over from uh, from all that and went into like Mad Magazine. So like a guy like John Severin, I thought was great in Crack Magazine, but I didn't realize that he'd done a bunch of like war comics and you know uh, stuff and Western comics and all these other kind of things. So a lot of it was sort of humor stuff, getting into sort of uh, the more comic book stuff. Like Jack Davis is a huge influence on mine, and you know. Uh, and, and I liked him a lot in Mad Magazine. Doing shows and setting up at shows can be profitable. Uh, I think if you're already established, it's a good way to supplement your income, make a little extra money. Um, but I mean, I always, I, I, I never go into a show expecting to make money. I, primarily, it's, it's a lot of it's to meet people, sort of make connections, and you know, especially now that you know I'm putting out my own books, it's like the idea is to get people aware of the books, because so much of it I'm sort of doing myself. Uh, in this particular one, I didn't necessarily go through Diamond or, or anything like that for distributing it. I'm selling it primarily at shows and on the book's website. People can order it through there. Um, so doing shows is a big component of that, too, in terms of getting around and getting the book in front of people and, you know, talking to retailers one-on-one, -on -one, selling a book to them. And you know. uh, Well, uh, I've taken on a few more gigs. I, I'm working on some more stuff with Paul Jenkins, who's a... a a comics writer who's written a ton of stuff for Marvel. He did Wolverine Origins, and we did a book called Sidekick for Image a few years back. And uh, we're probably going to do some more Sidekick at some point, um, we're, among other projects. Um, I did uh, an issue of a comic called The Unprofessionals that actor Alexis Cruz and his buddy Colin Rankin uh, co-wrote and put together. And uh, that's a pretty cool sort of crime comedy sort of noir. They're, they're calling it uh, a tale of sociopathic bromance, so I think that's pretty appropriate. Um, I, uh, I'm the artist on the webcomic Super Frat, which is an ongoing webcomic. It's about a, uh, a frat house that gets hit by a meteor and they all get superpowers. But none of them use them to fight crime, they use it to like scam chicks and steal beer and get into shenanigans. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just signed up to do uh, a book with the Roddenberry Company that I don't know if I could talk about too much just yet. Um, but yeah, there's going to be, this year there's going to be a lot more comics. This year there's going to be a lot more sort of stuff uh, coming out, so I'm pretty happy about it. You can find more of my work at uh, my website, chrismoreno.org. Uh, I also have a website for Zombie Dickheads, zombiedickheads.com. Uh, and then you can also find my work on DeviantArt, uh, chrismoreno.deviantart.com.